Hey guys, it's been a while. I've been busy, okay? So you don't have to get my ass about it. I built some Hall Effect sensors for the CNC, and I'm going to take you through the procedure with schematics if you want to do the same. Here we go! So here's the uh, early stages of building the uh, 393 circuit board. have two of the LM393s on there. Uh, each one of them has two comparators in it. So on your left side, you have comparator one. On the right side, comparator two. And so I'm going to use three all told. So I needed three channels all told. So I get two channels off the top one, and I use one channel off the, the bottom one. And here I'm just testing the input uh, just to make sure everything's working before I go too much farther. And here's just a still shot of the uh, 393 board and the RG45 board mounted to the CNC mounted where the Arduino was originally. I've already drilled a hole here, so the hall effect just slides through here. And sticks out a little bit, as you can see here on the other side. All right. So it won't let me go any Yeah, let me go way far in now. I have a disc neodymium magnet silicone there. I've got one in the exact same spot on the other side. And so I've already tested so that that lines up with where that sensor is. So as that comes over, and if you notice, the blue light for the uh, the X over there came on after we bottomed out. And I've killed power, so we'll call that a fail. That's a lot farther. All right, that was easy to figure out the problem. The problem is, I'm fucking stupid. But my question to you guys is, how many of you have spotted my flaw before we got to this point? How many of you can spot my flaw now? Well, in case you don't remember or you can't see, the magnet is right there, and there's another one mounted in the exact same spot on the other side. Do you see the flaw yet? I've always tested it by hand with no power to the steppers and with the magnet, everything in about that position. But when it Z's out, the magnet moves. So it's not even... <laughs> It's not anywhere near the fucking Hall Effect sensor when it gets over there. The Hall Effect sensor is right here. And I've been testing it by hand with it always right about here. But when it does its Z homing, it pulls up to about here easily an inch or more above the Hall Effect sensor. Like I said, I am stupid. So mounting it somewhere on the Z that's going to move, that's, yeah, that's not going to work. I was going to say for the homing, you know, it's going to be okay, but no, because even if it, even if I home it 
to the exact same Z every time, once I start doing the work, the Z is going to be moving around, and so it's not going to work as a hard limit switch anymore. So that perfect little mounting spot that I found for the magnets That perfect mounting spot right there on the side of that bearing block ain't gonna work. I've got to mount to something that doesn't move, which means I have to mount it here or here. So I moved the magnets to the uh, carriage here, one on the right, and you can see over here, another one on the left. And that's worked out very well. I uh, had to move the uh, Hall Effect sensors uh, into the channel there. You'll see that in a little bit. So for the Y table, I have a magnet here and I have another one towards the back. And so for Y homing, I'm able to have a single Hall Effect sensor down here to do the homing. and for the hard limit, positive and negative. So I'm able to use one Hall Effect, two magnets, and so one sensor does both, positive and negative, hard limits, and the homing. I couldn't do that on the X because the, uh, the carriage for the Z wasn't wide enough for where I had to put the magnets, so I had to have a Hall Effect sensor on each side. You can barely see it. The Hall Effect, is the, the tip of the Hall Effect sensor is just sticking out into the little channel right there. And that's all that needs to stick out. And I've obviously got the LED here so I can see from this side when that's triggered. And I have the exact same setup here on, on the other side. Inside there, the exact same thing going on. So I have it mounted to a PCB on this outside with a couple of holes drilled and then the, the sensor and the LED stick through the MDF on that side wiring going over to the comparator board same deal over here same deal over here PCB with the holofix sensor mounted on the other side and LED mounted on the other side two holes drilled and then they just stick through and then they they and the Y axis Hall Effect sensor board comes over. So those three sensors come over to the LM393 comparator boards. I have three LM393, actually two, sorry. So those three sensors come over to the LM393 circuit board where I have two LM393 ICs mounted. Each of these has two 393 comparators in it. And so I have the uh, X positive, is that the far right one? X positive comes over here and that plugs into one side of one comparator on the top 393. And then the X negative, I believe is the far left, it plugs in here to the other side. And then the Y plugs in here to one channel of the second 393. And 393, basically, basically 393, it's probably not needed. I could have run the Hall effects straight into the inputs on the uh, Arduino CNC Kerbal Shield. But I decided I wanted to come to a 393 here because I wanted a central place to break out my power and to break out the signal. And also by coming here and going through a 393, which is a comparator and also has a Schmidt trigger in it, it's going to clean up the signal because I was worried about uh, picking up noise from the spindle or just noise from long wire runs and so by having them come here the signal is cleaned up boosted if, if it's dropped some in its voltage level it's boosted back up and then sent over to the CNC shield so this is my extra protection over any noise that may be generated in the system this may not be necessary at all you may be able to run these straight to your gerbil shield and be just fine but I went ahead and designed this because I wanted to, and so here it is. Uh, and so I have I have on each sensor an LED to tell me when that sensor has been triggered. But I also have a blue LED on each channel here, so I can look over here and see when it's, each one has been triggered. 
Um, so, well, this is video. So there, my Y uh, hard limit has been reached. Uh, I just manually pulled it up here. And so now when that Y hard limit gets reached, get the LED here and the LED on that side of the signal uh, of the LED, uh, 393 to show me which one's been triggered. So I have double redundancy to show me which one's been triggered. Um, and then a power LED here to tell me when the board and everything is receiving power. Um, and it's working, it's working beautifully. The whole thing is just working beautifully. Uh, I haven't tested it yet with the spindle running. That's the true test because that's when the most noise is going to be generated. But I'm, I'm optimistic. But we'll see. Also the signals, the, uh, the power on the ground coming from the uh, Gerbil Arduino shield here to power this board and the three Hall effect sensors comes in there, red and black here. And these other four are my four channels from the 393, one of which is not used because I was able to double up on the uh, on the Y uh, sensors. But the first three then come from the sensors. That's the signal going back to the Arduino, uh, telling it that the sensor has been trignal, uh, uh, triggered. And so all of this goes down to this RJ45 breakout box. And so each of those plugs into there, and then I'm able to use just a standard uh, Cat5 Ethernet cable to run back to the Arduino, where it breaks out and then goes, you know, to its, each individual ports. So the RJ45 comes in the bottom here. You got the same kind of breakout board over here. Power and ground breakout, and then here are your four data lines, only three of which are used for the signals from the Hall effect which go up to the one to the Y, and then two to the X positive and X negative. The positive and negative from the RJ45 board comes up and goes to this five volt and ground header right here on the Arduino shield. So now that I got me some cool LEDs on this CNC and the Hall effect sensors, but mainly the cool LEDs, now mine is the shit. So here we go, here are those schematics I promised you. <laughs> 